Welcome. In a previous video, I went over the procedure for capturing HDMI on a Raspberry Pi 4. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to capture two streams at once. So to understand this video, you really need to go watch that video. So I'll put a link in the description of that video. And I'll also put a link to the hardware I'm using. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So similar to the last video, I have a Raspberry Pi 4 here, but I have two HDMI USB capture cards. I have each one of those hooked up to a device. The first one of those is hooked up to an NES Classic, and the second one's hooked up to an SNES Classic. And I have both of them just running their demo modes. So those two devices, I think they output 1080p, but they display content that was created for traditional television, so there's not a lot of motion and things like that. So I don't know how well this would work if you had, say, two high-action uh, Xbox games or something, for instance. So if you do try this, drop a comment below on your experience with this. I'm curious to see how it worked for you. So I'm running this from my Mac and I'm SSH'd into my Raspberry Pi. The reason being I didn't have enough USB ports to put both these adapters in and the keyboard and mouse because I'm also booting from a USB stick. So let's examine how the two devices are named. So I have the v4l2-ctl command. I'll run that with list devices and it will list the devices out here. And in the previous video we used slash dev slash video zero. And the second stream is under slash dev slash video two. So we want to use video 0 and video 2. Now for audio, I'll run this FFmpeg-sources pulse. And you can see we have four devices down here. And it's the top two that we're interested in, the macro silicon. And you can see they're the same except for the second one says dot .2 at the end. Now in the previous video, I just used the word default to access the pulse audio device. In this video, I actually named them both. And that's just so it's not confusing to people reading it. You could use default for the first one and then name the second one. So this is the command I'm going to run to capture the two streams. When you see this little backslash here and it goes to the next line, you can treat this like it's just one big line. This is just a technique you can use to break down long lines to make them easier to read. So I have four lines here and these are for the four input streams. The first one is video, second one is audio, third one is video two, second one is audio two. We have the thread queue size on all four of them and that's similar to the previous video. We have the input format is MJPEG for both of the video streams. The video size here is 1080p, and the frame rate is 60. And this card will not capture 60, so I'll just change this to 30. There we go. And then for the audio, we have the ALSA input USB macro silicon USB video 2, and we have the dot .2 after the second one. So these are our inputs here. Next, we have dash codec copy. So this is just going to copy the streams into the file, and then we have copy tb space one. And I was getting a specific error message and I did some search in some forums and it said to enter this to stop the error message and it seems to have worked. So you can experiment with that on your own. And we have this copied here and here. So you could in theory have a different codec for each of these stream output files. So after this line, we have the output here and we use the map command. And these numbers after the map command are indexes and they start at zero. So what you're saying here with zero colon zero is take the first input and take the first stream from the first input. And then map one colon zero says, take the second input and the first stream from that input. And it will write those to stream one dot AVI. Then we have the codec copy and the copy TB again. And then the last line we have map two colon zero, and that two is the third input, the first stream in that. And then we have the fourth input first stream, and that will output to stream two dot AVI. And I think I have it right on the screen here. I may have screwed up saying it because it's kind of confusing sometimes. It helps when you break it down like this so you can kind of organize it. So I can take this big command here, copy it, and I'll paste it to the Raspberry Pi. And you could run this directly on the Raspberry Pi or, or you can SSH into it like I am. So I'll run that and now it will start recording. And you'll know it's working well when you see the speed is around 1x. That means you're not dropping a lot of frames. Now here's that error message. I had that earlier before I had the copy TB in there, but I had it more often. If you start seeing the speed, say, um, you know, 0.5, it means you're dropping a lot of frames. We are storing two streams here. So I'll let that run for another minute here. Okay, now I'll hit Q to stop it. Clear my screen, I'll type ls space dash lh, and you can see stream one and stream two AVI here. 
So you can see stream 1 is 157 megabytes and stream 2 is 256 megabytes. Now the second stream was the Super Nintendo and it probably has more detailed graphics that take more storage to be encoded. So now I'll get on my Max terminal here. I'll copy those files from the Raspberry Pi. So I will put a link in the description to these commands I'm typing in here, and you'll find a lot of other commands on the previous video, which I linked to below also. So now I can type ffplay, and I'll type stream1.avi, and you can see the recorded video here. And then I can do the same here with stream2. There we go. So I'll insert the native video files here so you can watch them and see them at native quality. Okay, so that's how you can record two HDMI video streams on a Raspberry Pi 4. And this is just a simple demonstration. Like I said earlier, please share your experiences with this if you're doing more complex things and such. I'd be interested to hear how it works. But until then, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.